From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Food and beverage company Lipstar Group's Dickon Hall Foods facility will allow the company to not just increase its customer relationship advantage, but also allow it to develop additional channels. Simone Lietka tells us more. Keeping in mind that the South Dial-based Deacon Hall Foods is the place where it all began for Lipstar in South Africa, Deacon Hall Foods business unit head Neil van Heerden tells us a little more about the facility. This facility was started in 1962. Lipstar obviously bought it in 2005. Uh, it originally belonged to Unilever. It was a Unilever facility. It's always been mainly a chutney plant. 52% of our volumes is in chutney. Um, and then also various other sources and salad dressings such as Knoll, salad dressings, uh, some Nestle sauces, um, some uh, dip tubs, etc. And so it's basically a, a wet source plant. We like to call ourselves trusted wet quality source specialists and believe that we can make any wet source that uh, needs to be done in South Africa and greater Africa. Naturally, a wet source facility wouldn't be anything without the products it produces. For this reason, Van Heerden elaborates a little on the facility's volumes for us. Our biggest product in the plant is chutney. 52% of the plant goes into chutney. Um, the 470 gram mild original chutney for Mrs. Balls is about 22% of our turnover. The line runs at 224 bottles per minute. 70,000 bottles per eight hour shift or 1.1 million bottles per week. We use about 135 tons of sugar a week. We use about 40 tons of peaches. Um, that is the main ingredients in chutney. And then further very large volumes in vinegar, sunflower oil, etc. From a water point of view, we use about 246,000 liters of water a day for cooking, cleaning, and also in the boiler, which produces steam, runs on natural gas. So basically a high volume plant. Other big lines is uh, North Salad Dressings, also McDonald's Taps, as well as Ku Tomato, Ku and All Gold Tomato Paste for Tiger. Considering the multiple sectors and industries which are currently taking strain amid a tough business environment in South Africa, Van Heerden highlights how factors such as constant innovation, automation and understanding the gaps play a role in mitigating this tough environment, as well as its related challenges. In a high volume uh, plant, your operating efficiencies, uh, OEEs, which is overall equipment effectiveness, and um, is, is key factor and low cost producer. If your volume producing need low cost. So we've done a number of uh, automation in the last six months or so and we will do more in 2019. For example, with the new capper, uh, collator and tray erector on the 470 line, a robotic packer for tomato paste, a robotic packer on the tub line uh, that produce the dip tubs. And so going forward, our main thing is on automation as far as we can and then also optimum manning levels and shift patterns as well as information systems to monitor our efficiency on a daily basis. So that will be our focus going forward and it will be going to be lowest cost and efficient. Other news making headlines, Heavy Hole Game Changer and Telcom's mobile division lifts Group's full year performance. The chairperson for the International Heavy Hole Association believes collaboration is the key to ensuring that global heavy hole operators mitigate the risks associated with the fourth industrial revolution and capitalize on the emerging opportunities. The main challenge of the, of the heavy haulers is how do we ensure that uh, the heavy haul industry um, you know, navigates um, at, uh, in the fourth industrial revolution. Because we hear now of, uh, of uh, driverless trucks being tested in a number of uh, parts of the world and, 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 and there is a need for heavy haulers to remain competitive because the gap between the, the, the road hauling and also the, the, ra the rail hauling is, is, is actually reducing in terms of the cost and, and even safety. So one of the main challenges is how do you ensure that we have your haulers leverage uh, from the historical successes of being very good at deploying technology, being disciplined in terms of operations. How do you leverage on that and ensure that you can embrace the fourth industrial revolution and, and therefore not be disrupted and stay competitive? Telcom's mobile division elevated its overall operating revenue 
headline earnings and EBITDA for the financial year ended March 31st. Just at the headline level, from a group perspective, we think that uh, it's a solid set of results uh, for the year under review. Uh, we've seen revenues grow by about 5% largely underpinned by two things. Firstly, the mobile growth, uh, which we'll unpack later on, uh, has, been, has been more than stellar uh, in terms of both subscriber growth and also revenue growth. Um, um, mobile service revenue growth has grown by about 58% uh, in the year under review. Um, so the growth that we have seen in the last couple of years, we've seen it accelerating uh, in the year under review. Our uh, EBITDA is up about 8.5% uh, compared to the year before, to 11.3 billion rands. Um, and our HEPs up about 22% uh, compared to, to the year before. Our CAPEX is broadly still within the range of the guidance. Uh, we spent about 7.7 .7 billion uh, in the year under review, uh, focused still in the priority areas that I'll take you through. And we still declare dividend that is uh, broadly better than the year before, 2% up uh, compared to the year before. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.